This is lesson 2.1, and today we're going to be talking about the atom. Our goal is to explore the atom and learn how protons, neutrons, and electrons vary in different elements and different isotopes. Now let's start off and think about the size of an atom, right? We've all heard that atoms are small, but how small is an atom? And not only atoms, what about the stuff inside an atom? How small are the particles that make up an atom? Those things are known as subatomic particles, and subatomic particles are protons, neutrons, and electrons. Those are the things that make up an atom. Now, in order to understand really how small atoms and the subatomic particles are, I'd like to start with something a little bit bigger, that is, red blood cells, right? Red blood cells, we all have red blood cells. They're really small, you can't see them. Now, how big are they? And to understand this, I'd like to think of an analogy. Let's suppose your hand was the size of an entire football stadium. How big do you think one of your red blood cells would be? It turns out that if your hand were the size of an entire football stadium, a red blood cell would be about the size of this bouncy ball. Now, let's continue on and think about well, what if this red blood cell were now blown up to the size of an entire football stadium? How big would an atom be inside this red blood cell? Okay, and we're gonna think not about just any old atom, right? Different atoms have different sizes. So what about a carbon atom? Carbon atoms are found in red blood cells. They're found throughout your body. They're very, very important. So how big would a carbon atom be if a red blood cell was the size of an entire football stadium? What do you think? It turns out that a carbon atom would be about the size of this little bead if a red blood cell with the size of an entire football stadium. That's pretty small, but let's not stop there. What if this carbon atom were now the size of an entire football stadium? Now we could see the stuff inside the carbon atom, right? The protons, neutrons, and electrons. And let's think about well, how big is a proton, right? So let's suppose a carbon atom was the size of an entire football stadium. How big would one proton be inside the atom? And this is where it gets really, really weird. Right? It turns out that in that case, a proton would be about the size of a little grain of sand. So this grain of sand that I have here, I don't even, you probably can't even see it. It's so small, right? That's crazy, right? If an atom were the size of an entire football stadium, you could only just barely see a proton. And that means that an atom, first of all, an atom is mostly empty space. And it also means that this model for the atom is actually incorrect, right? Because if an atom were only the size of your screen there, you wouldn't be able to see the protons, neutrons, or electrons. They would only be visible if an atom were the size of an entire football stadium. And they would only be barely visible, right? A grain of sand. So that's crazy. Now, what do we know about protons, neutrons, electrons? So your protons and neutrons, they're about the same size. So that's your grain of sand if an atom were the size of a football stadium. Now, electrons, it turns out that electrons, we don't even know how big electrons are. We think that they're smaller than protons and neutrons, but we don't know the exact size. What we do know about protons, neutrons, and electrons is that protons have a charge of positive one, neutrons are neutral with a charge of zero, and electrons have a negative one charge, okay? And so I wanna kind of stop here, and I want you to spend some extra time today going through this simulation. This is a simulation that's put together by the University of Colorado, and so just go to this website, bet.colorado.edu slash n slash simulation slash build an atom. And we're going to be building atoms together in kind of a simulated lab here where we can look inside of atoms. All right. Now, FET actually has a lot of cool simulations, a lot of chemistry simulations, some physics simulations, some biology simulations, but they have a lot of cool stuff. So we're going to go there today. You could simply just search FET build an atom, or you could just type this into your browser. All right, so let's just go there now. All right, so what you can do in your browser, you can type fet.colorado.edu slash n slash simulation slash build an atom, or you could just simply do a search for fet and build an atom, okay? And then this will pop up. So you should see something like this. Once you come to here, you're gonna press the play. This So just click right in here. And then this is gonna come up. It's gonna load the simulation and you can have some choices, right? Three different choices. Choose the atom choice, all right? And then this is gonna be the simulation right here. 
All right, so what you wanna do is you want to click on the plus buttons here and the plus buttons here, and you'll be able to see some more detail about the atom, right? This is the net charge, this is the mass number, and you wanna have all this stuff open before you start. So what you can do is you can grab these protons, neutrons, and electrons and add them to the atom. So I'm going to grab a proton here, right? And you can see all of a sudden things change, right? Now this is hydrogen and we see hydrogen is highlighted right here on the periodic table and it has a net charge of plus one, a mass number of one. We can grab another proton, put it in the center here, and now it changes to helium. So that changed the element and now it gives us a charge of plus two and a mass number of two. So it's increasing all of those when we add protons. What about neutrons? Let's add a neutron to it. We noticed that the name didn't change at all. It's still helium and the net charge is still plus two, but now the mass number is bigger, right? So it has a mass of three. The mass number is essentially the approximate mass of the atom. So it's the mass of the atom rounded to the nearest whole number. You can also add electrons. If you add an electron, we find that the electron doesn't go in the middle, it goes around on the outside here, and it doesn't change the element, right? It's still helium, but it did change something, right? It changed the net charge. The net charge went from plus two now to plus one, and the mass number is still the same, right? It's still three. So we can add another electron, and now that becomes neutral, but the mass number is still the same. So you guys can explore that, go through the worksheet that I gave you guys, answer the questions, and write down all the stuff that you discover as you go through this simulation. All right, have fun with it. This is really, really cool that we're able to look inside the atom and do this simulation here and see it.